Another great mystery of physiology. Another sudden hunch. Sheldon Weinbaum is a detective of biomechanics who has solved some of the biggest mysteries in physiology, but his first case might have been his most important one. It was summer, 1960, and 23-year-old Weinbaum had come south from Harvard to Philadelphia, searching for a woman in blue. I saw her in a fleeting maybe 15 seconds, and I decided I have to meet this person. He looked her up in the phone book. Her name was Sandy Walkowitz, and she would change Weinbaum's life. By the 60s, they were married. At the height of the Cold War, Weinbaum was a rising star in Harvard's engineering program. His models of missile trajectories brought in government grants, and thousands gathered, eager to hear his talks. Meanwhile, Sandy was fighting for civil rights. She went on a bus with her closest friend from a black church, and they went to hear the famous talk of Martin Luther King, the I Have a Dream speech, and I was not on that bus. It's one of the things that I have most regretted. My wife basically has changed the way I look at the world. Weinbaum followed Sandy into a generation's fight for peace and equality. He returned his U.S. government weapons grants and took a professorship at the City College of New York in Harlem, where he spearheaded a new era of diversity. And I had a program with 25 minority students a year. The total number in the United States of PhDs produced by minority students at that time could have been between 30 and 40. And he began to apply his engineering skills to the mysteries of the body. I get a call from the Cardiovascular Research Foundation to come down and they have a mystery for me. By this time, Weinbaum had already solved the very challenging and controversial problem on how heat in blood flow moves between arteries, veins, and capillaries in the body, how bones sense pressure, how the kidneys sense fluid. This new mystery had to do with vulnerable plaques in the arteries. When they burst, they cause the fatal blood clots that account for 50% of cardiovascular deaths in the US. Doctors couldn't explain how they were rupturing. A hunch hit Weinbaum out of the blue. And then I got a crazy idea. Back in the 1920s, when they were first making rubber tires, they would explode. And they found out that what was causing it was that there were solid impurities in the rubber. Over time, these deposits weakened the rubber around them. The same had to be true in the arteries. Special imaging machines proved him right. The almost invisible calcifications were exactly where Weinbaum said they'd be. The discovery is laying groundwork for life-saving imaging tests that may one day let doctors identify patients at risk for certain types of heart attacks and strokes. Weinbaum's push for equality never let up. He recruited women from around the world into science and influenced the changing demographics of membership in the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. And he famously won a landmark 1992 lawsuit against the state of New York for discriminatory funding practices in education. Weinbaum credits it all to Sandy. So that's how we met. <laughs> but the other part of it, my father was very ill in the hospital at that time. He died about 10 days later, and Sandy has never met my father. But I told him the day before he died that I had met the woman who I thought I would marry. That is the story.